recording everybody welcome everybody oh, we got a lot of fresh blood today this is good um, so I'm gonna get started if anyone misses any of this and there's some people that can't make the meeting right now you can hear the recording this is being recorded with voco screen open source recording software and posting on YouTube as soon as this this is done let me share my screen and uh, go right into the meeting there's a lot of stuff going on uh, perspective um, yeah a little little perspective first the workshop is coming up on April 29 in at factory farm in Missouri we've got three people already signed up not bad at all for the first week given given that the first week is typically the slowest right after the posting kind of picks up the week second and third uh, but the goal is 12 people um, hopefully as many as 24 we can handle 24 people or so and um, that's going well the design is complete the build is like you see back there that's the that's the 3d printer I'm gonna be prototyping the the other versions which are the 12 and 8 inch versions so I'll be posting some videos on that in the meantime um, let's talk about the team okay so we're recruiting OSE developers you can go let me let me share my screen now and let's go to the meeting so sharing the screen and uh, let, let me go into the presentation so I've got the presentation so as far as the team um, we're recruiting and you can join the, if you go to the OSE devs page here you have the invitation all of you have have become OSE developers by passing the OSE FreeCAD test FreeCAD is the main tool that we use here uh, one of the main tools for development and documentation now um, welcome to we actually had a flurry of five new people join the team so this is these are the team stats uh, so hopefully the week after this as you see here this number is gonna have a little bump little continuous increase we started essentially in February with a team of one or two we're building the numbers and this is OSC developers as opposed to ad hoc development we're getting people to pass the actual test to make sure that they have a basic skill set and commitment to work in the project in an effective way so right here what you can see is uh, that's the number of people what we're tracking is the number of active developers keyword being active so why is there a drop here well a person didn't drop off the team a person may have not done work that that week or may have not logged their hours what we do is we track our hours so we see how this open source product development pipeline works as um, if others want to replicate it just to show our record because if we can measure it we can improve it we can we can get this velocity of increasing the team numbers and team effort where here um, the effort is shown what happened to my mouse my mouse died on me uh, Pardon. Okay, my mouse. Now what happened to my mouse? There it is. Okay, my mouse is back up. Okay, uh, we're tracking both the number of developers in blue and the development hours. The development hours are shown divided by 10. The weekly requirement for the OSC devs is 10 hours per week. So what you should see is that the, the hours number, if divided by 10, should follow roughly the number of developers. So each developer gets one unit, one unit being... Uh, one unit should be put in every week which is 10 hours of work so that's how it works and there's a uh, for the new people on a team you're gonna get a welcome email which describes how to do the timesheet the timesheet is on the wiki everything is on the wiki but the timesheet is on the wiki at timesheet the page called timesheet where you simply fill that out just one note on it um, the filling <laughs> I know Jose you did this but um, the filling is work for that week it's not cumulative so you basically say what's your name what you what you worked on and how many hours you develop you worked on a development team it's this week it's not cu overall it's for that week just make sure you do that and then break down the tasks for the working hours okay so let's get to the right to the topic of today so so as far as what we're doing on a 3d printer you might have seen the advertisement on the if you haven't go to openbuildinginstitute.org the video for the 3d printer workshop is there under upcoming workshops 
Now, what's the current status? The current status is producing documentation for the build. Now, one thing that facilitates the documentation is exploded part diagrams, and that's the main theme of today. So, exploded part animations, it's a feature that's found within FreeCAD and accessible very easily. What I did is a, is a quick sample here in FreeCAD where you download the... Oh yeah, so let me share the, the presentation. The presentation is on a D3D. Um, so check that out. The presentation that I'm looking at, please you can follow that, the notes for this meeting. You can see the background on the Exploded Parts Animation Workbench. You download that, put it in, the instructions are here. Exploded Parts Animation Introduction. Basically, it allows you to, pr the Exploded Part Animations, the good thing about that is, while I have built the, the 3D printer here and I can take real video instructionals, other people can't if they do not have the machine, but you can do quite close with exploded part animations. They allow you to produce high quality assembly instructionals using a distributed team if you have the CAD file. So where do you find the CAD file? Well the first thing is if you look on top uh, on that page we can feel free to go there um, and you can see the sizzle reel for meaning just exciting in D3D well, not D3D, but other animations of exploded parts. So you can go to the D3D part library or D3D integration page, which is, which has the files that we currently have in FreeCAD. You can start downloading them. If you go to D3D integration, just to, to get you oriented, when I click on that, you see this exploded, well, the, this, this kind of a diagram here. What you want is, uh, one is the overall assembly file, which is up, up in the corner here. You can click on that to download the file or you have all the different parts as modules so you can download that. So for example here I downloaded the universal axis, one of the universal axes. That's where you get the files. So download the software, uh, add it to your FreeCAD by the instructions that are, that are shown here, the procedure for downloading the, the exploded parts animation workbench is here um, so you can take a look at that and it's good it, this is pretty cool actually it's very easy to use and just to demonstrate very quickly uh, I have the uh, installed the explode part animation you select it so ex you select exploded assembly and then you can play it so actually what I did is uh, just very simple just kind of splitting out the parts one by one and then you can record videos. The cool thing is you can actually, you know, rotate everything as it as it's moving. Um, so that's that's pretty nice. Uh, nice videos can be captured. You can see that in 3D, and therefore you can make uh, videos of how things come together. And this is just a demo. But the idea is, um, and it, it actually cra at, my, at least I, I have um, FreeCAD version 0.16. It crashes all the time. But it's very the instructions for that are very simple. You you click a face, for example, that one, or along which you want to move, and just click this blue button here, and it moves it. See, it moves it towards that direction of any face. So whichever way that face is pointing, you will see that happen, uh, that motion happens. So it just crashed on me. So maybe it got better in version 0.17, but I'm just saving constantly because at least there's something, some artifact where it crashes all the time. So, okay, so how do we do the procedures for the, the, the 3D printer? Take the download the file of interest, so what we'll do is we'll break down, like in page 7, we would break down the, all the priority modules into divide the work person by person. So we can work on things in parallel because the, the device is made of different modules. We divide the modules. You, you take your module, you explode the object as needed. You can also vary the speed, extent, and order of the explosion, but that, that you'd have to learn. I, I didn't. Uh, we want to put together a nice instructional that shows how to do that. You can watch some of the instructionals linked in this presentation. But 
um, and then the bolts rotate and stuff like that so it looks nice so the second step is record a voice over of the step-by-step -step procedure now the critical part there is the step-by-step -step procedure now that has to be accurate and and well proven those are actually not written and that is, that's our next step so as soon as this this meeting is over I'm gonna work on doing those and other people can also do those but those need to be pretty exact so we know we have some instructionals already that have been started you can go at on the d3d log page uh, d3d log is just exactly that d3d log uh, if you look at the title d3d log but that has all our past meetings links to the um, all the video recordings unfortunately we missed the last week's so you have different videos of the previous week's meetings we missed the last week because I didn't record the voice right now I do have the voice recording let's close this so so step-by-step -step procedure is the next step which we want to work on and then voice uh, so I'd like you all to to get on this task and and get some voice training or or go at it um, put a link to voice training if you want to learn things about voice because voice is important uh, about a hundred thousand years ago people have gained a voice <laughs> uh, about five thousand years ago we learned to write in the 1990s wikis came into existence which allowed people to collaborate in recorded knowledge and then the 2000s Google Docs appeared or cloud collaborative documents appeared so we can now work on these collaborative documents that we can we can um, we can work together on and the, la the latest in human evolution is the possibility to make collaborative video edits so this is this is what's here so voice voice is very important is my point uh, communication is very important we take that very seriously at open source ecology because you can have all the great work but if no one finds out about it uh, or if you can't teach people quickly um, then it's no good and um, so the idea is the voiceover and the instructional should be rapid quick fire no dead space like you see my FreeCAD 101 video which I humbly claim is the best FreeCAD video in the world <laughs> but the idea there was zero dead time every millisecond is precious because because if, if a million people are gonna gonna watch that video even if you have one second of dead space that's hours of time wasted in people's lives uh, so that's the idea so you have to describe every step be rapid the tight edit is what we want so you know Caden live a little bit you can get better at it but here there's the the free CAD the exploded part of the diagram workbench you can use Caden live to edit the video so you record it record it using some kind of a recorder uh, I think um, audacity has it so synch so after you create the explosion that matches your voiceover take that into Caden live and edit the video as needed to make make 15 second chunks 15 second chunks should take you like an hour to do 15 seconds of of actual real edit like real high quality that should be um, something that would take an hour so the assignment for this week would be to to do that by starting with the with the priority modules and breaking it down to people for people to do them and then when you do this further break your module into 15 second sections so if your thing takes like say a minute total like for the total instructional break it into bite-sized chunks let me explain that during the workshop what we will have is a looping video and in the workshop everyone will build in parallel we are going to build as a team in order in order for everyone to finish what happens is that as soon as any person is done they help the people that are slower so what we'll have is video video monitors or mo monitors in a workshop and then it will loop constantly through a sequence that will take about 15 minutes to build 
but the video that you actually use to get that 15 minutes of build time will be about 15 seconds. So it's about a second to minute expansion from the video to the actual build process. What we found in the last, this is what we found in the last workshop that a lot of people would lag behind and they would never catch up and then we'd have to go back to them and do like all these different steps at the same time instead of everybody helping each other. So we're learning that if we can help everybody go at the same speed, we can do a faster build in the extreme manufacturing process. So the point is, the last person that is done, they should have the entire team helping them finish, which means that the, more, the, the last people that get left behind, they get swarmed on by the rest of the team and then it gets finished really fast. So that's the way we're designing this workshop to operate so we can have incredible build fun and velocity at the same time. So that's a little bit about that. So, so outside of that, uh, that's kind of all I have on what we have to do. So what we have to do is pretty much spread the work between different people and then uh, divide the modules up, download the modules and coordinate that carefully after we find out a little bit of update on what's what's happening from last week. So from last week what we've been doing is we've done pretty much the the 16 inch version of the 3D printer. The CAD was complete. Last week we were working on a 12 inch version because we're using nested frames like if you look at our designs on the D3D wiki page we've got nested frames like the 3D printer you see back here there's cutouts from the insides of that that make smaller 3D printers. So what we're doing right now is 16, 12, and 8. In fact, I just got, uh, just now, uh, I got new metal, but I'm exploring 16, 13, 10, and 8. So actually getting four sets out of one set of cutting of metal. But we were working on a 12 and 8 inch version. The 8 inch version we're calling the D3D Mini. It would have a five by five inch print surface. So let's let's uh, get a little update on where that stands. So so Jose, I know we've been working on a 12 inch version. Maybe you can fill us in where we are. We don't have uh, Emmanuel on a team here. He's doing the the eight inch version, and that we got to finish up because uh, I'm going to be prototyping that uh, like tomorrow this week, so that we can get more videos showing how we build these things all together. Jose, fill us in on where you're at, uh, just quickly. Can you speak? Okay. All right, I, I thank you. Uh, I have a link to the presentation. Oh, wow, we can hardly, can hardly hear you there. Um, can you hear me now? It might be a little better. If you set your settings to the, the limit bandwidth, go to audio only. Yeah, I think we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, let me show you here. Okay. Can you see my, you see my screen? Okay, we're going to have to go. Yeah, let me see. Not yet. Okay. No, I can't see your, seem to be oh. able to see your screen. Oh. Are you oh. sharing it? Okay. Yeah, okay. So so you're talking about April 10 downloading. Yeah, let me share my screen then again. And I'm going to Jose's log, so Jose, Jose log, you can find that on the wiki and download the April 10, the 12 inch version one there, correct? There is a, there is a presentation, yeah, you can go to, a, I, I documented it in a presentation, so I oh, okay. have to open the file line. Excellent, very nice. Uh, so the second link there, integration of 12 inch version? And uh, you go to the comments. 
Okay, to the three. Ah, sorry. Yeah, there. Okay. All right. Go to 15, to 15 slide. Okay, page 15. No, 18 actually. Okay, let's see, eight, page 18. Okay, so page 18, we've got, uh, so basically that's the design we're looking at, the extruder carriage, the way the extruder, the 3D printer extruder sits on a carriage. So limit of distance you can get doesn't work, you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's how it would be. Yeah, yeah I made the two parts to check what you said. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The carriage and the motor is also attached with the with the small screws. You can see them uh, transparency. You zoom in. Okay. So yeah. that's. Let's no, see. This is, uh, old. This is old stuff. That's old. Uh, so this is the new stuff. So so what's the conclusion? The conclusion is to put it underneath, like you show. Okay. Okay. Now, the only thing I can say, yeah, um, sh it should be magnetically mounted. I, I, from what I see, it's this not. This is not magnet. These are actually screws because the magnet. I think I didn't took the risk of putting it with magnet because uh, it's a little bit unstable with the extruder. Also, I, I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's um no altogether the idea is pretty good. So, um, just to check in on this. So with this, like say this works, how much of the frame do you still need to need to do? Because we pretty much want to finish up the 12 inch version and see if we can get you also going on the in, exploded part animation instructionals. How much do you have to do on the uh, 12 inch frame version for the overall uh, yeah. design? Okay. Uh, the things that I, 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 many of the, of the parts are positioned so they are not actually constrained uh, as an assembly, in, in assembly constraints. So if you go to the file, you can see fully uh, every, every, every part in this position. Uh, and I also organize it by folder so you can see uh, a structure of folders and and some modules to make it easier to okay. Work, you know? Okay, but, so uh, the, the next uh, thing to do uh, would be to, to have it really perfect is to actually assemble the parts uh, using assembly constraints. And some are not uh, using assembly constraints. Okay, all right. Um, that sounds good. So I'm downloading the medium-sized version right now. I'll take a look at that. Anyone else can do that. This is from Jose's log. Um, okay, so a couple of notes here. Uh, I can assure you the magnets are plenty strong. Each one of them does like five to eight pounds. Like it's hard to pull it off by hand. So you don't have to worry because on the, on the mount... I would like you to do the magnetic mount and do the same hole pattern as before because that works really well. And then okay. uh, the other part is I wouldn't go with it. You have those four screws there. You can make it support, just make it support with the clamp down screws because that's just easier to put together. Uh, if you do what you just showed there, that means you would need to add another type of screw to this assembly, a longer M3 screw, which would increase our pa part count by one. And we're being very vigilant about how many parts we're using. Currently, we only have three screws total on the assembly to make this whole thing work. So we don't want to add more because then we go nuts. So um, 
Can you? Yeah, I mean, that's the right idea, but it, but please, if you can, do the magnetic attachment and just do the pinch on the sides so that you hold the motor. So maybe extend that uh, that support for the motor a little more so it's yeah. supporting the bottom so it's not overhanging so much. Yeah, yeah. So do you have one thing that I have a uh, problem with finding parts, like for instance, uh, the, the, I, I used the design of the previous uh, of the previous uh, interface of the uh -huh. intruder to design this one. But uh -huh. uh, it's difficult to find the, the parts. Like, for instance, this part that you were saying. Uh, I, oh, I, I see. Don't know, no, I don't know exactly how, how to do the, the change. I know how to do the magnet change. Okay. But the, the other one, I, don't, I didn't get it. I uh, see. So what you're... What you're asking for is the part library of all the accepted parts, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we do have a page on the wiki called, so I, I started this recently and it's called D3D Part Library. And we want to put all, see, because, yeah, now we get more people, we want to organize everything better. The best we have so far is that D3D integration page, but here's the part library. So on this page, um, how come it's not moving up? There it is. So basically we've got this page and you can download and click on all the different parts that we're using. So we want to basically put up, this is basically a gallery of parts. I was just putting up the frame here. But what we want to do is have this as the approved source of all the good files. So you guys can post all the ones like, yeah, for example, the extruder mount that should be a part here and so forth. So we want to put that all in here. All I can tell you is that where that file is is going to be who did it and who did it was Emmanuel. So you go to Emmanuel log. Um, I'll put paste that link for everybody there. Uh, he, he's got a lot of the different files there. So that's what we want to do. Um, but yeah, so the the page called D3D Part Library, that's in progress, but that's critical to here because the workflow is, and I'm gonna go back to the document here, uh, so, so a little bit more about the steps. Um, so I'm gonna just talk, talk about that a little more, fine-tuned fine the instructionals here. So, so put uh, part two, so download so for each module, the idea is for the Explorer Part animations. For each module, you would... Okay, so Jose, I, I think we're we're done on the 12-inch version. You can make those upgrades, just to wrap that up. Okay, so 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 moving on, um, for every module, and this is this is talking about the 16-inch D3D distributed enterprise 3D printer. Uh, for every module, download the the correct part parts from the D3D part library wiki page. Okay? And then so you can be working at different levels like if you're putting together an assembly for just say the carriage piece versus like the entire axis. Um, there's different, many different parts. So depending on what you're working on, you, you select the appropriate file from the library and the, the library needs to get updated because right now uh, most parts, I'm gonna put a note there, most parts So I was looking at this this file here. Most parts are currently at the D3D integration page or Manalis log. That's a manual's log. Um, okay, so so what I mean by that is uh, let me see, so let me put this free CAD. So, I don't know what's happening here. 
Okay, anyway, my freak is freezing up here. Um, select the appropriate file, and then the script is the next step. So that's what we have to work on um, as a team. And, and what we want to do is allocate the different parts to different people. So, um, so I think what we can do best right now is, um, let's see, allocate the different, different uh, activities to people. But let's check in on, on some, I'm kind of jumping around here a little bit, but I guess uh, Jean-Baptiste, do you have any, um, any report from uh, the latest you did on the documentation? Any, any more work that you've done? Or? Yeah, I've updated the exploded diagram. Hold on, let me post a link to that. Okay. So that's also... Okay. Let's see that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's the kind of stuff we want to be doing. Now, so we have exploded part diagrams like this, but these are not animated. So the, the goal of the animation is to go a step beyond that and make it like a video that we can actually play. So, so whoever does these videos, we're going to play them during the workshop as real instructional. So this is serious work. This is not anything trivial. This is uh, a lot of people will be looking at these. And if we put them into Caden Live, then we can continuously actually edit those files or update those files because we'll have all the source code. We'll have the FreeCAD files. We'll have the instructionals, the text, like whether it's the instructionals like this or whether it's the actual plain script of very tight one sentence after another. Um, but yeah, uh, totally editable for future versions. And that's pretty good. So this is perhaps the most complete, um, yeah, complete instance of what we have here. Like, for example, the magnets... Tell me the status of the magnets. You have to, you if to make it actually complete. I, I see you're missing a couple, right? You're missing a few, right? right. Okay. I, I wasn't sure how many magnets go for each. Um, yeah. Each of the access uh, access parts. Yep. But I, I'm using five for each, so I'm missing five here on the motor side and one on the on the carriage slider. That's correct. The carriage slider should use should have so let me let me zoom in on that and actually explain this to people so this is actually the best working document here so if i zoom in a little bit on this um this is the carriage this is the place where the motor this is sorry this is the one where the motor attaches and this is where the idler attaches so on the carriage one the magnets are there like in the corners one two three four and then in the two middle ones five six on the end ones, they're on the edge ones and the middle ones because the, the closest thin one won't, won't actually be on the metal. And this one, these four are on because those will be the ones that over the metal. This one is actually would not be over the current metal frame since the metal frame ends at about one and a half inches, like about there. So that's the pattern. But the idea is now to take the axis and then start working on it and so first you want to attach the mag. well you actually don't attach the magnets first let me go through the general procedure what you do is you take each of the printed pieces you put in the bolts you screw them in together then you put in the rods that's the second step so you have no, before no, sorry before the rods you have to put in the bearings for the rods so the bearings go inside the carriage there and you can see all of this within the the CAD model so um, this is something you can figure out. It takes both thinking and then just looking at these diagrams. So these four linear bearings go inside the carriage slide. After you have the bearings in and the bolts in, then you put in the rods. Once you have the rods, then you assemble the motor piece. You clamp that together and put that onto the rods and, put, and then put the idler piece, clamp it together and then put it on the rods. And that way you have the, uh, you're basically at that point in the assembled carriage, assembled the axis, then you have to put on the, 
the, the stepper motor. You just put that on with a small four bolts. Um, oops. The small four bolts. Yeah, they're stepper motor. There should be by the stepper motor. They're actually not shown here. That should have the small four bolts for the stepper motor. I don't see them here, so that's another thing that's but, missing. I have the text link to them, but I haven't actually shown them yet. Okay. Yeah, so after you put this sandwich on, you first put in the, the pulley onto the motor. You put the motor onto this motor carriage piece. And then, after you have the motor on, you want to make sure on the other side, as you assemble the idler piece, you put that idler inside so that the belt can get on it. So after you've got the, the drive system there, then you insert the belt. Now the belt is a linear belt, and then the belt is actually pinched inside the toothed groove on the carriage. So if you look at the detail on the carriage, it actually has teeth on this part. So the belt goes in there one side through the other, and then the other belt goes in from the other side and so forth, and you have these two pegs so what's missing there also for you, Jean-Baptiste, is the, the pegs, which are after the belts go in there, they punch in. And you can see that on our Facebook page. I showed a detail of that, but it's actually quite tricky. The procedure for, for putting in the pegs, there's nothing hard about it. It's actually very elegant, but it has to be done in the right order. I need to write that out carefully because you can logic it out, but it's a little trickery. So, so that's that. Um, so for now, what I would suggest then, just so people get started with the assembly animations, so that's basically how one of these frames go. Once you got the frames and the magnets, so the magnets go on, you gl they're actually glued on with crazy glue, they don't come off. So you put in the magnets, and you have to hold the magnets down for like 30 seconds because they're going to jump out. Like for example, this magnet and that magnet, if you just leave them alone, they'll probably jump to one each other. They're, they're so strong. So you have to hold them down uh, is the idea. So once you put down all the magnets, you have to hold them um, and so forth. But then that's pretty much it for one of those frames. And then once you have the frames, you have the, sorry, the frames, the, the axes. Once you have the axes, then you put them onto the frames by magnetic attachment and then you screw them together. So what I would suggest for now is that each of us get a little piece of this action here. So whoever's on the on the show here, we should say, okay, let's do a tiny piece for everybody. So say, uh, we should divide it down to as little as, okay, for the x-axis, or not even before the axes, we have the actual carriages, the, the printed piece sandwiches, the, what do you call them? I mean the carriage, the axis pieces, um, axis plastic pieces. Um, so we can call it axis motor side. That means you're attaching the motor, motor to it. The second one is the carriage side to which the, to which the extruder is attached. Then you have the idler side. So each of these could get an exploded part animation, and we should start with that. We should perfect these, get people practicing, and once we've got those going, we can import them. Uh, I haven't tried how you import exploded part animations into other files, but if we, for example, have the axis motor side, and then we import it to make the whole axis, then I think the animation should be imported at the same time. Like, you can... In other words, you can build in the animations at the primitive level, like the axis motor side, and then if you insert it into the x-axis, once you're building the x-axis from individual parts, because the workflow is typically to make an assembly, you just you just uh, import individual parts. So those parts should have the the animations imported along with the part. That would be great. So let's do that. Uh, another piece is the extruder. Another piece is the, well, the extruder is there, so it's already, but that's a primi pretty primitive piece. Uh, there's the end stops right here. There's the frame, cable chain, wiring. So now cable chain and wiring are kind of complicated because they got so many pieces. That's maybe for advanced people. Um, but for these, we can definitely divide and conquer on this. So 
Okay, who wants to take these? Speak up then. So we, we want to divide it as finely as possible for everyone who's on the team here. So who's uh, who's going to do... Who's going to do what? Um... Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Who wants to do the motor side? Let's talk about Chaz. Chaz is joining the team, so we talked about a little bit about the universal controller. And that's actually, let's talk a little bit about that, because um, uh, that's one point of division. But I think, Chaz, you, 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 in the meantime, while I give the instructions for that, maybe you can sign up for that. But I sign up for one of the free cat animations because you want to get that practice if you haven't practiced it. But the idea on a universal controller is that we want to make a scalable analog of the ramps um, with the ramps board, but make it such that it can drive any size of a stepper motor. Uh, so Chaz is going to work on that, and, and we can talk. I'll. Um, we can talk about that, Chaz, a little later. Uh, it's not so important for now because we can take that discussion offline. Just the point being that for the CNC torch table and the larger 3D printers that we're going to be building, we're going to need the universal controller, which can handle more power and bigger size machines. So that's the idea there. But outside yeah. of that, outside of that aside, uh, Chaz, you want to take on one one of these pieces so you learn this part because that's going to be critical. For I can try the access motor uh, side. Okay, that would be great. So try that. Uh, who wants to do the idler side? We've got Roberto. Welcome to you. We've got Abe. We've got Lashlo. Uh, you guys want to take on? And Jose. Jose, you've got some work to do on finishing up stuff. But Jose, you think you would have any time left over this week? Or or save save it for finishing the 12, 12 inch? version you guys by the way can edit let's see the sharing documents on this doc here you can find and view it I'm gonna make it so you can find and edit so you can actually put your name on on this it's a freely open editable doc and it's actually okay to make these completely open in fact whenever you share docs they should be completely open because if if someone say wants to, the only concern is someone wants to trash it because it's open. Anyone on the internet can see it. Well, it doesn't matter because file you have um, C revision history. You can actually look at the revision history, and we'll pull up all the previous versions. So if someone hacks this, you can actually restore it to any former version. So you don't have to worry about people hacking your documents. So uh, that's the idea. But you guys can now actually edit this document, so you can feel free to put your names by. Whichever one, but I'm not getting any volunteers. Who wants to do the... Yeah. Let's see, so... Jose, you want to do anything, or are you going to be busy on a 12-inch, you think? I didn't hear that, but if you can, go into this document and put your name by what you can do. So the document there is... Um, that's the document right there. Prioritize the 12-inch vision. Okay, okay, so prioritize the 12-inch version. Okay, so I think I'm going to start allocating here. So idler side, how about, uh, Roberto, can you take that, perhaps? Extruder, so we know that Cedric is working on it. He couldn't make the meeting today, but we're going to allocate the extruder to Cedric. Now, this is just the pr pretty primitive parts. Now, the x-axis means the entire x-axis, meaning the axis carriage idler and other parts. So that's uh, getting a little more advanced there. Uh, who wants to do that? That's, it's just a little different. Let's see. I'm going to pick some names here. So Abe. Abe, are you going to be able to do do some, some of this? I'm going to put you down for the x-axis and y-axis and z-axis those are all slightly different I mean the y-axis the two y-axis are the same but altogether they've got a few little details that are different so there's Abe and then Lashlow um, you think you could do that can we allocate that I think that's what we're gonna do 
um, silence is acquiescence. So, okay, but we have some more parts that are outstanding here. Uh, so these are pretty much uh, people got covered on those. We got people coverage on those. Um, and these ones are still to be done by others. So maybe we can see if, um, for example, we can have... Emmanuel do that one heated bed. I'm gonna see if Brian. I know Brian was out for an injury sometime. Let's see if Brian is available, and then end stops and other people. Uh, let's see. So that's about. See, actually, Emmanuel. Like as far as the wiring and cable chain, uh, it would be nice if we can get the cable chain constrained such that if you move one end of the cable chain, the whole thing stretches out without having to move the individual parts. The cable chain is a whole connected chain. So we want to, that's a little more advanced in terms of FreeCAD, but we can design it such that you constrain it with the circular constraints that if you pull on one, one link, it will actually stretch out the whole uh, chain. So actually next week, um, we'll continue on the exploded part animations, and I'm going to see if we can add the other workbenches to FreeCAD, which are things like there's an animation workbench, and there's also fabrication drawings, technical drawings uh, creation. So we probably what we want to do for next week, instead of getting into the animation, we might want to get into the technical drawings section because it will also be very useful to produce part drawings with all the dimensions labeled and everything else. And that's you can do that in a professional way within FreeCAD and you can import your own title block. So I think that's probably what we want to learn next week unless people have other suggestions for the learning program. Because the idea here is we teach each other, uh, we learn every week something new on this. But okay, as far as the people concerned, we've got uh, six of these allocated, and um, we're going to try to allocate a couple more of these to the other people on the team, uh, if we can. Uh, but yeah, this is good. That's I mean, that's good for now. We're actively recruiting, so tell your friends about this, and hopefully we get more people uh, joining the team. But other than that, let's see. What what are the questions? Maybe we can open it up to discussion and questions. I have a, I have a quick kind of a question uh, or problem. When I was redesigning the parts, uh -huh. I, was, I was missing like a, a, a drawing because it's very difficult to design a figure without specification. Like it's right. not solid work, right? Right. So, uh, for instance, when you're going to design a part based on another one, like I did, I struggle a lot because I had to do measurements which are not quite accurate. So at that point, I thought that it makes sense to uh, to have uh, drawings. And also, if you go to the part inside the part that I designed, there are reference parts as well because it was very difficult to uh -huh. to design on top of the assembly. You know, uh -huh. once it was as it was. Okay, so we need to work on a part library and making sure all the primitive parts are available. So what I'd like you to do is if you can just email me a list, a specific list of outstanding parts or set up placeholders within the library. You can create one of these placeholders. Like here, it's a placeholder for the frame. The frame hasn't been uploaded here. Uh, oh, sorry, let me share my screen again. Um, the best thing for you to do is either just email me with the specific parts yeah we got to finalize them and find them on people's logs this is okay hold on a sec okay i'm sharing my screen again uh, jose if you go to the d3d part library the best thing to do would be to seed those placeholders for the specific missing parts because here we want to get down to each and individual part file so for example i want to make one entry for the metal like bolts rods um, so have one file that you can pull down all the bolts and rods and other metal pieces uh, so Jose if you want to seed that as individual files and define exactly what's needed in those files that would help it would help it would be the best if you just went to the d3d part library page on the wiki and start if you click edit you'll see the syntax for the gallery um, it's just basically the syntax there is um, You'll see it, you'll figure it out. It's a gallery tag, and then you have the different entries. The entries should be 
uh, separated like that. That's that's like one entry. We've got like one, two, three, four, five entries so far. You can see them. See that what the syntax is like for the wiki markup. So you can actually add your own here. We've got five things right now. So yeah, if you could do that, does that that address that issue? Because we got to pull those parts up and make sure everyone's working with the the right 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 parts. Yeah, one thing I was trying to, I, I, there, uh, one thing I was trying to achieve was to make it easy to modify. It because yeah. uh, it's nice to have the parts, but it's very difficult to get them uh, easy to change. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. So. So one, uh, so one thing I tried to do was to, uh, for instance, have a kind of a, a best practice, which I don't know if it's a good one to have. For instance, the reference part inside of the part as well as a geometry reference. But then, when you export, when you import a, a part in in uh, in uh, FreeCAD, it doesn't matter. It doesn't look at the at the at the objects that are uh, not visible. You know. Yeah, we want to establish a best practices guide for how each of these files are structured. So we want to start that and do that. You can start that. We haven't really published that yet, but we want to do that, definitely. Standards and practices. And I want to show you what I mean by this just by going into this one sample file. Like, for example, when we create the library, what we're promising to the world is a construction set. So what that means, if we've got our library parts, you can take each file, so say that, you know, the, the motor side of the axis, but you can also modify it. Now, how do you modify it? Okay, what happened to my free cat here? My screen dropped out. Something's happening here. But basically the idea here is that within this, like for example, if this is the idle the the carriage right here. You have and I my free cat crashed here. I'm doing too many things at once, but you if you click on the sketch, anything that says sketch, you will get to the underlying sketch and it will allow you to actually modify, like for example, the size of the holes and everything else. So that's you can get to the underlying sketches, and when you change the sketch, like for example, I added a, another a magnet hole to this, and when I changed the sketch, the actual extruded part appeared properly it showed the new hole already because the the extrusion part was already done on that sketch and if the sketch is updated whatever was operated upon that sketch also got updated so that's that's kind of what we mean by the construction set yes but but best practices and and specifics on that are definitely valuable so so what i will do right after this meeting i will continue to put parts up you can start playing with the actual uh well for example like whoever's got the axis piece you can put together that axis piece by making a sandwich out of that putting the bolts in there that you can do already and putting in the nuts in there so you have to go to the download the available files as we said we have at the d3d part library and d3d integration so between those two you can start getting oriented as far as where all the parts are and they are going to be put into here so you can see all of them like for example the right y-axis here contains the bolts and things so you can you can copy and paste components out of the files the best way to work with FreeCAD is to import files so it's in at this level here for the part library you want to have a file for a separate file for every component and now that's not too bad because the entire d3d as I mentioned it's only 40 unique parts which is a great low number it's not hundreds of different parts it's 40 unique parts altogether so that's it um, so I think that's about it for for what I have to say today um, people who are joining you'll get a welcome email uh, first of all welcome to the team my new open sourcers uh, as far as the weekly timesheet goes, make sure you fill that out every week. Keep track of your work because this is really valuable for learning for the project as far as how this open source product development method can 
be replicated by others. So we're developing something novel here in terms of the volunteer development efforts. Um, but that's about it for me. If you guys got any questions, otherwise what I'll do is I want to follow up on this meeting and um, once all the different parts are up here, I'll email you. But what I'll be doing is working on that right now so that we make sure we have all the individual parts that make up all the exploded part animations. But in the meantime, you can start playing, just uh, download the Exploded Part Animations Workbench, um, start playing with it, and you can see the sample file within the document. You can open up my sample document right here. Uh, let's see, where is that sample document? Here's the sample file on page 5. I actually uploaded a new version of the Axis with some of the explosions but it's it's relatively straightforward to learn um, and once you once you learn the basics go right into the work and check off um, as soon as you start you gotta start your work log uh, I think most of you have done that make sure whatever you do you just keep look keep uh, putting stuff up on your work log so that it's transparent that you've done stuff and uh, for example at, towards the end of the week if or you know today or in the next coming days if if I can look at your work log and see nothing is happening there then I'm gonna say hey what's happening are you are you getting started all right so it's good feedback to have that transparent reporting as far as where where you are in progress but as soon as you have something publish it to your log and also one of the things you want to do is sign up for on the um, it's called the OSC Social Network, but it's the Developers Network, and it's the we have the 3D Printer group on there. You'll get a welcome email with all these details. So I'm just giving you a preview, but the network, um, it's network.opensourceecology.org, and if you go to the 3D Printer group, so please set up an account there and post your comments or reports there. Uh, so, so in the 3D Printer development group. As you see here, we've got, you know, posting various different things, various updates and questions and comments. Uh, so that should be our discussion thread for the, the working team. And also feel free to use the OSC Workshops Facebook group because that's that's got a huge audience. As far as the OSC social network, there's hardly anybody on it yet. We're just starting that. Uh, but you can feel free to, to get an account there and start posting on the 3D printer development group. That's an open access group. Anyone can join that, so feel free to join that, um, especially since you're a developer and you can post your comments and questions there. So with that said, um, I think we're pretty good to go. It's exciting to learn the D3D assembly animations. Uh, that's going to make things, you know, just basically adding the skill set upon our repository of FreeCAD knowledge so that eventually we can pr produce a very high quality FreeCAD education course uh, for people so people can just learn faster because it's really painful right now to learn from all the FreeCAD videos out there because there's, um, there's a lot of confusion out there Not the documentation is lagging well behind where FreeCAD itself where, where its capacity is so we want to help uh, on documenting FreeCAD capacity okay but that's about all I've got for now. Any questions? Anyone want to want to say anything? I'm um, just review on the controller. Yep. Are you gonna send me an email or? Yeah, I'm gonna send you an email on that. So what I'll do is I'll I'll get to that like right now after this meeting. I'll send you that out, and then I'm gonna uh, work on putting all the library files onto the D3D library page so everyone has access. And. Um, in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I mean, the way I'd like, I mean, just, just as a refresher on how the work log works, publish early and often, please. Um, the idea is, like, don't save, like, oh, I'm going to wait till Monday till I'm going to publish my results. Well, for one, if that happens, then, like, say I'm reviewing that. I can't handle all of it on Monday. It's better if you just keep posting little bits up one at a time so that the progress and discussion is continuous. It's not like all of a sudden you dump this uh, lump of work on my lap or on whoever is reviewing it 
or whoever is the collaborator uh, think of it as a constant ongoing discussion back and forth where we're shooting comments and emails discussions back and forth because there's a lot of complexity to this process you can't just answer it all at once so it's better as soon as you have a question email use the the de development network use the email I mean email is right now the most most favorable I prefer I mean email is very easy I prefer that you communicate like back and forth on an email as opposed to oh just one time upload um, because the theory here is publish early and often um, publish early and often don't be afraid to publish incomplete work everything is incomplete everyone's life all the projects in the world are incomplete don't be afraid to publish that something that is visibly incomplete you know that's the culture of open source you got to publish early and often so people can build upon it uh, don't be shy about it it's kind of takes it kind of takes a lot of self-esteem to do that because you can't you really have to be confident that um, you know you're gonna get feedback if you publish it it goes out and it's free, open to feedback and and people spamming it or whatever it takes self-esteem actually high self-esteem for people to publish uh, early and often because uh, you just have to say simply to yourself it's okay it's fine and it is fine it's uh, don't be afraid to publish that's the culture of open source so I think with that said um, that's about all for now um, and whoever is the new people welcome to all you new new people uh, you'll get a welcome email including the free cat badge which we are preparing for you so um, tell all your friends about it and otherwise if there's no more questions we can finish up right here everyone good no can right. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I guess I have questions okay. about uh, the general 3D printer yep. and uh, the files. Are there? I'm not real familiar with the uh, whole 3D printer. Yeah. What's been going on with that in detail? It's a big project, so I've been keeping an eye on it. But uh, I, I want to keep doing the FreeCAD so that, that yeah. X-axis is fine with me. Um, I guess I need to look over the wiki more. I was looking at uh, yeah. Uh, what was it earlier? Uh, an exploded part animations page with YouTube videos there. Uh huh. So I'm guessing there are already FreeCAD files broken down of these different parts and accesses, or do we need to go to like to the central file and? Uh, Good get, question. Uh, are we separating everything out and then making animations? Yeah. No, there are separate files already. So that's the whole point. Uh, so if you look into the chat box, those are the relevant pages you want to look at. It's the D3D log okay. yeah. that gets you all the past meetings except last week's. D3D is the overall project page. And D3D integration is that page which shows the actual breakdown of the machine. You can download all the individual modules. And as far as the parts, um, the individual parts that would be d3d part library uh, so that's the that's okay. the last one the, the part library that i showed i've got i think most of those pages open at uh -huh. the moment um let's see what else um oh i i still can't seem to get uh, I, th I think i had access to that google doc but it changed and it's still now it's requesting Whoa. permissions again yeah i see that so, so i'm gonna go yeah what happened there so I'm gonna make that public to the web. Anyone can edit, save. Ah, oh, okay, good point, thank you. Somehow I, I locked it up. Maybe Google hacked it, hacked us. Okay, it's all, it should be open right now, you can check that, so good points. Uh, any other questions? And welcome Abe, good to have you on board. I know you've been uh, working on a CEB press and we're gonna definitely get back to that. We're producing at least two, two CEB presses in, in August of this year. And more power cubes and a tractor and excavator and sawmill. So we've got, we're gonna be very busy in, in August. So that's why we wanna master our free CAD and get the team growing so we can really crank out product one after another. That sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much. If there's no more questions, um, we'll uh, touch. The next meeting is every Monday at 11 a.m. If you have scheduled conflicts, please let me know if another time besides 11 a.m. works. Now, 11 a.m. is good because the people in Europe can actually join us, like Jose or 
Cedric. Um, so 11 a.m. is good for Europeans. And eventually, of course, we have more of these uh, team meetings in different time zones. But for now, this is the 11 a.m. Central Standard Time in the U United States. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, so tell your friends and and we'll see you next week please email me with any updates or any questions don't be shy about that and continue the discussion and and start your log if you haven't and publish early and often so with that I'll get going thanks a lot we'll see you again next week and this is recorded so I'll put this up on YouTube as soon as I get this processed thank you